Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. It is that time of the month again. Not that time, but my favorites and fails time. Today we're gonna to be talking about my favorites that I have been really enjoying for the month of February 2020 and some things that, um, you know, I just uh, really didn't get along with. And you guys know I don't like to drag out the intro to these videos, so I am just going to jump straight in. Starting off with a foundation, this is brand new from Makeup Forever. It is the Reboot Foundation. I had been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for this to come out, and I am not disappointed. This is something that I have enjoyed since the very first time I have used it, and <laughs> I now have it in three different shades because if you watched my video, I ordered it from the Makeup Forever site because the one that the shade match, like the shade finder on Sephora, said that I needed to get was way too light for me. I'm telling you, it was, it was very, very fair. And then I ordered my shade, which was Y315, and somehow I ended up with another shade, which ended up being just a mishap on Sephora's part, and they were amazing. They sent an email. I actually found out in my comment section before I got the email, but I've been bad. I haven't been keeping up with my emails. <laughs> Anywho, it was just a mess up on their part, and they ended up refunding me. I got my correct shade, and this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. This is such a great foundation for daily wear. It is light coverage. I know it claims to be buildable, but I really just find this to be a light coverage foundation. This isn't something I would grab for if I have a lot of breakouts going on. Like right now I have two on my cheek on each side, <laughs> but... <laughs> For the daily wear, it is a beautiful satin luminous radiant foundation, light coverage, feels great on the skin, and it lasts so long. I've really been enjoying this, and especially now that I have the right shade. The other two, ironically, when I mix them together, are perfect as well, but now I have three bottles of this that I need to go through. But I'm happy about it because I really enjoy this, and I think that this is going to work for a lot of different people, whether you are oily, combo, normal, or dry. As long as you prep your skin correctly according to your skin type, I believe that this will work for you. And just in case you're wondering, I am combo. Next up, this beauty from YSL. If you're looking for a very smooth highlighter that is going to give you that lit from within, but just a little bit extra, this is it. It is so beautiful. It's called the Touche Clot 3D All Over Glow. And I, I can't. I was just was not expecting this. I think this is so beautiful. I have it on right now, and I don't have a ton of it on, but it gives me a glow, but just a little bit more, and I love it on my forehead because it doesn't accentuate any dryness or anything like that. I don't feel like it accentuates texture. It's very smooth. I love the smell of it. If you have tried the All Hours Foundation, it smells just like that, and it's just... It's beautiful, and I think this is gonna work for a wide variety of skin tones as well. When you swatch it, it looks a little bit darker, but on your skin, it just kind of melts in and then adds the radiance. I believe, I would say light to medium tan, possibly darker, but I'm not certain. That is my safe range. I would definitely say that it would work for you, but this is just beautiful. I have absolutely been loving it. Kelly Gooch here on YouTube. If you have not checked her out, make sure you do. She's such a sweetheart. But I was recently watching one of her videos and she talked about this year being the year of blushes. And I absolutely agree because there's so many that I have just been loving and I have I have been wanting for more blushes to come out with more formulas and just something extra in the blush section. I feel like, you know, a lot of times companies just forget about blush. And now I have so many to choose from. I love what NARS is doing. I love these right here from MAC. These are the Play Glow, no, sorry, put that backwards, Glow Play Blushes. These two are my favorite. I have five of them, but these two are the ones that I use the most. They have this putty-like texture. This one I am wearing right now. This is my absolute favorite out of all of them. It is called So Natural. And you can apply this with your finger. You can apply it with a sponge. You can apply it with a brush. And I'm gonna get into brushes next because of what I like to apply my YSL powder and this with. 
But these are just so amazing. They give a skin-like texture without emphasizing anything. I don't feel like this messes with my pores. I don't feel like it's too shiny. It's luminous, but more of a skin-like luminosity. It's not greasy. It doesn't move around. It lasts on me all day. And I'm just such a huge fan of these. And I love that I can use a brush with them instead of having to put in the extra work of a sponge or fingers or anything like that. If it was fingers... I wouldn't do it because <laughs> I just don't like touching my face like that. This other shade right here that I use the most is Cheer Up. So, So Natural is my favorite and this is my second favorite and it's just a beautiful pinky coral. I have also mixed these. They're just stunning. These are such a good formula. I'm so glad that I have so many different shades to choose from. If you're looking for a blush that is going to give you that radiant skin-like finish that will work well on top of unset foundation, it will work well on top of powder because that's how I do it. I do my foundation, I do my powder, I set everything. I do my bronzer and then I go in with this with a brush and I just stamp it on. It's perfect and it blends out so, so beautifully. These are top notch. MAC killed it with these. For the brushes that I have been enjoying applying those last two products, I'm gonna, okay, this is the one I use today. It's dirty. I've been using it and you can kind of see that I've been pressing <laughs> stuff in with it, but BK Beauty. I've talked about this line several different times. Lisa J, again here on YouTube, this is her brand and she has done a phenomenal job. I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again. I'm not a huge fan of most synthetic brushes. I do have several that I really enjoy, but overall brand wise, BK Beauty has my favorite synthetic brush line. They just are amazing. And then everything that the brand stands for, please check out her videos, check out her site, everything. They're just amazing. This is a clean version of the brush that I use today to apply my blush. This is the 107. So this one and this one right here are my two favorites out of the collection. This is just a perfect blush brush, whether you are using a powder or that kind of putty formula or even a cream liquid, whatever. Because it's synthetic, it's going to work with everything. And I just find this to be so effortless. I love the shape of it, that it's like slightly pinched, but then it's like fatter. It's just so good. And then I have been using this guy right here, which is the 108. Again, I have my dirty one up here. This is my clean one. I have two different sets because I don't know why she likes me so much, but she sent me two sets and I was like, thank you so much. <laughs> but this is the 108. And typically I don't like this shape for highlighting. I have so many different ones that are natural hair that I really love for other applications, but not for highlight. This one actually works for the highlight. And I think it's because it's just a little bit denser and it being synthetic, that it just applies my highlight so beautifully and it blends it out really nicely. I use this today to apply my highlight to my cheeks, to my nose, to my chin, to my, I almost said my brows, <laughs> to my forehead, and they're gorgeous. There's also three other brushes in this collection. I forget the name of the collection off the top of my head, so I'm gonna leave it right here. This is something that you can use in place of this guy right here, which is the Tom Ford number 11. I use that all the time to go down the sides of my nose to contour, and I really like it in the crease. This does it all. So you can use it to contour your nose, and the number again, 206. You can use this to contour your nose. You can get into the crease really well. You can apply shadow to the lid. Such a beautiful brush. And then this one for smoking out the lower lash line, so, so good. And it is the number 207. And then if you like a teeny, 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 tiny little angled brush, for liner or stamping on your shadow. I like to use shadow a lot of the time to stamp right along my lash line to make my lashes look even thicker. This one right here is the 208, but I think she did a beautiful job. I love all of her brushes and I look forward to seeing this collection grow. Her products have been top notch so far. So if you're a synthetic brush lover, or brush lover in general, a brush lover in general, I've gotta say, because that's how I feel I am. I just love brushes. I love these eyeshadow palettes. I have 
three for this month. The first one is from Viziart. I actually was sent this one, but I purchased it before I knew it was getting sent to me. I would just, I knew I had to have it. So now I have two of them. This is the Viziart Paris Edit Palette. I think that they have been doing such a good job with the edits. And this is no exception. This is a neutral, cool lover's dream. Oh my goodness, it is so gorgeous. I love the shades in here. I love the pigmentation of these. I love the metallics, that they are metallic without being too over the top. So if you don't want something that is super intense, but you still want it to look like a metallic, I, I there's this fine line between what I enjoy and what I don't. I like metallics that are super intense and I like just regular metallics, but I don't like metallics that look like they have left the eye or look like they just aren't even there or you have to wet them or just things like that. I don't enjoy that. And this palette works so beautifully on its own. I especially love this shade right here. You know I go for this one and then just, it's just gorgeous. I think that you can get so many different looks out of this palette and I love the size of it as well because not too many people go through an eyeshadow palette. So having it in this size, it's just very convenient. And also if you're a traveler, this is helpful to have it in this size. Now let's talk about what I have on my eyes today. I have both of these palettes combined. <sighs> This is arguably one of the, if not the best palette that Too Faced has ever put out. I am so impressed with this and I have been using this, I think the most out of all of the new palettes that I have. This is stunning. It's the Born This Way, The Natural Nudes. It's a cardboard packaging. You get the mirror on the inside and then these are the shades. I love that they made the metallic shades in here smaller than the mattes because Usually we are going to use mattes far more than we do the metallics. I tend to hit pan on a matte shade long before I will on a metallic. But as you can see, you just have like these different sections. This section right here is kind of neutral. This one is more on the rosy, slightly warm side. And then down here you have more of a neutral and warm as well. And it's just, and it goes deeper. I just think this is gorgeous. And the pigmentation is insane. I went in with this shade right here thinking that it was going to be lighter. Whew, no, it, it, it packs a punch, you guys. So I know now <laughs> that I'm gonna start off with this one and if I want to, I can also mix with this shade right here to lighten up these shades. But because of the pigmentation, this is going to work for so many different skin tones as well. I really mean it when I say that this is one of the best palettes that they have done and it's one of the palettes that I'm gonna get the most use out of it because it doesn't have a ton of color. It's every day for me and I just, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. I have that one on mixed with the Natasha Denona Love Palette. Now I want to tell you guys that I have seen reviews back and forth with this, and I am not gonna negate the fact that there's definitely people having problems with this palette. I fortunately was not one of those. I wanna tell you that I got my palette from Natasha Denona, like on her site. I didn't get it from Sephora or any of the other retailers, but my batch code, I just want to tell you, just in case this is helpful to anybody, it says S347. Again, I don't know if that's helpful, but I know that people are having issues and then other people aren't. And I don't know what the inconsistencies are. I don't know if there's a problem with the batches. All I can tell you is that mine is amazing. And you can see that whenever you go to look at my video, you see the tutorials and how well that they perform. And you guys also know that I have no issue saying when a Natasha Denono palette, Denono, <laughs> Denono palette is not any good. This for me is perfection. The only thing that I have to say about this is that you really have to like pinks and purples because that is what this palette is. There really isn't a transition shade that isn't pink or or purple. <laughs> this one right here even goes pretty pink on my eyes. And so for today, I wanted to kind of calm it down a little bit. That's why I went in with a Too Faced palette and I just used two shades into the crease and then I started in with this. The shades I have on today are Heartbeat, Commitment, Blind, Dream. I have that on my lower lash line and then First. So I used mainly this palette and then just used two of the shades that are in the Too Faced palette. I 
love the color selection in here. I just think it's gorgeous. It's very Valentine's Day. I know that Valentine's Day is over, but I think that this was the perfect palette to come out with for Valentine's Day. And then these two right here are those creamy mattes. I love them. I love them so, so much. I just think that they are beautiful. In case you wanna see this in action, I did several different looks and a review. I think it's perfection. I think it's beautiful. It's not something that I'm going to use every single day, but it's definitely a palette I'm gonna grab for when I want those purpley tones, those pinks, and just this type of vibe. It's something that I am going to reach for, and it's nothing like anything else I have in my collection. When I look at it, I think that it would be, but then when you go to swatching, it's just not, it's not. Speaking of Natasha Denona, she came out with this at the same time. And this is the Love Glow Cheek Palette. I need so many different shades of this, same formula, just give me five different palettes so that I can have different colors because Holy bejeebies, I love this so, so much. I love everything in here. The Glow Cream Base, I end up using as a blush and it kind of gives just a little bit more of a radiant effect, but the same type of deal that the MAC blushes do. But with this, I need to use my sponge to apply it. It's just a little bit more emollient. And then this here, this look, this is stunning. It is so bright, it is so vibrant. And then these two down here for highlighting, I love this formula because I feel like it's very intense and smooth and just beautiful. And it has this like peachiness to it that I really enjoy. So it's not the same color that is in the tan palette, which I also love. And I don't know if you guys can see, but I have dug into this glitter right here, which is not just a glitter, it is a diamond powder. I feel like this actually looks like like glass on the skin. It's just so pretty. And I'm not somebody who loves glitter in highlights, but this one, I, I'm so in love with. I had, <laughs> I was doing looks so many times that would complement the pinks in here on my cheeks just so that I could use this because I love the formula of it so much. I like this one more than I do the original, which I don't even remember what that, Bloom. It was Bloom. I love the Bloom as well, but I... I adore this one. This one is absolute perfection. I just need it in more shades. I would love to have that in a more natural color, kind of like this one right here from MAC. This one is so natural. I want this in a palette like that with the diamond powder, with the highlight and everything. I would be Oh, so, 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 so happy. Another product that is on my eyes right now, and you guys have seen me wearing this oh, all the time because I love it. I love the color of it. I love the longevity. This does not move, and it's just, it's something other than black, and it's not brown either. And what I'm talking about is the Pillow Talk Eyeliner from Charlotte Tilbury. Let me show you the color. It's like this brown with a little bit of red, like it's just a berry brown, I don't know. I put it in my lower waterline today. I have it on my top lid as my liner and it's just, there's something about the color that I find to be so flattering. It doesn't matter if I'm wearing browns, if I'm wearing pinks, if I'm wearing like the purples and the silver today, it just complements so nicely. And again, the longevity of it is just impeccable. I just tried to get this off and uh, that's, as, that's as far as I got. So uh, we're just gonna leave it there. All right, next up, this is new and it might be a little bit of a cheat, but I don't care because I have been using this every single day. <laughs> and it is from Tatcha. This is the Lil Look, this is the liquid silk canvas. I was talking to Puffin yesterday and I was saying a name of a city in <laughs> Florida and I had turned all the O's into A's. He was like, what are you even saying? I was like, I don't know, leave me alone. I just, my eyes don't see things the same. And on top of that, I'm dyslexic. So come out of here. Why did I put this back in the box? I have no idea why I put this back in the box. I don't even have the top of it, but I have the box. <laughs> I am not gonna pump this out because I do not wanna go through it. This does not come out until March 3rd, and I'm just waiting. I use one pump that will do my entire face, and it's the liquid silk canvas. It's basically the silk canvas, but a liquid with a pump, amazing. This is so beautiful. I feel like it gives me the same effects of the silk canvas, which I absolutely love, 
but this has just a little bit more hydration to it and a pump. It has a pump. So I can't wait. I can't wait. I love this so much. I just think it looks so smooth on my skin. It gives me that extra hydration. It perfects my makeup. It gives me that barrier in between my makeup and my skin. It's It protects. It's just everything. Tatcha, you did it again. You did it again. Two products from Fenty Beauty. You guys have heard me rave about this. I'm not going to go too far into it. All I can tell you is that this is my very last of my sample sizes. <laughs> I love this mascara so much. This is the full frontal mascara. This is what I am currently wearing. I love the way that it makes my lashes look. I feel like I get the length, the volume, the drama, everything, and it lasts all day. I don't have any flaking or anything like that. I can get my lashes separated. It's just absolute perfection. Yes, I have already ordered the full size. And again, this might be a repeat to a lot of you guys that watch all of my videos. I'm trying to be good and go through some that I already have open mascaras that I need to finish up before I open up the full size of that mascara, but I don't know how well I'm going to do. I'm going to try to be good, you guys. I'm really going to try to be good. <laughs> the other Fenty Beauty product that I am loving are the new gloss bombs. I have two here. The first one is Sweet Mouth, which I just think is so beautiful. I love the light pink. It's just, mm, it's so good. But my absolute favorite is this one right here. I have this on top of my kitten liner, which is my collaboration with Christian Audet. I know I get like all giddy and silly whenever I talk about it, but I really love my liner. I love my lipsticks. I love my entire collection. And let's be real, my liner is one of the only things that actually lasts underneath glosses. This gloss though, I, it looks like it's going to be so dark but it just gives you the perfect amount of pigmentation. And this is in the shade Hot Chocolate. I love it. I love it so, so, so much. This is probably, I think this one's my favorite. I think this is my favorite out of all of the ones that I have tried. And I have most of them. I don't have the clear one. I think it's Glass Slipper. And there's a few minis that I don't have, but I've swatched them. This is it. This is just everything. I love that it gives just a little bit extra color to the lips. And I've always loved this formula. Today, I'm wearing it on top of Kitten, so it makes Kitten just a little bit darker. If I wear this on top of Smooches, which is really dark on me, Ah, this gives me the best chocolatey lip. Oh, it's so, so pretty. All right, last favorite of the month comes from Tom Ford, and it's their new fragrance, Rose Prick. Not only do I love roses, and not only do I love the packaging on this, I am. there's just something about this baby pink that's, like, it's so light. It's a beautiful pink, and the black that just is so aesthetically pleasing to me. But on top of that, I love the smell. At first, it kind of reminds me of baby powder. I don't know why, but it reminds me of baby powder and then that dies down and the smell that I get is gorgeous. Puffin likes it. And when Puffin likes something, it just makes me extra happy. This is what I would consider to be more of a spring summer fragrance, but I still been wearing it. I'm just, maybe I'm trying to just bring the spring just a little bit closer to like hurry up and get here. But this is fresh. It's green. It's rosy without it being like that typical rose smell that you will find in a lot of fragrances or even in skincare or makeup you have to try this out. And if it smells like baby powder at first, wait a little bit and then see how it smells. Cause I'm telling you, after that goes away, this is just so beautiful. And what I have found that I really enjoy, which I wasn't expecting, cause I tried this out with my Lost Cherry. You know, you put the scents together, you have the fragrance wardrobe or whatever. Um, no, that made me want to vomit. Mm -mm. Didn't like it at all. My husband did not like it either. He was like, what is that? I'm not doing that again. However, my absolute favorite is Oud Mineral, which is complete opposite to this. But I just thought, mm, I'm going to try it out. I've also tried it with Oud Wood, which I do like. But this one is beautiful. Oh, it is so beautiful. And look, look how close. I am almost out of this. I'm all the way down here. But it's okay because I just bought a decanter. 
I don't think they're going to be making the decanters anymore, but I was able to get my hands on one. Thank goodness. Oud Mineral and Rose Prick, these together, perfection. I love the mixture of the rose and the oud. It's just something about it that I, I'm just, I'm really, really into. Lastly, for my fails, I only have two, but I'm really disappointed in both of them. The first one is not going to be a surprise to you that watched this video. <sighs> I knew better to purchase this. I knew that I have not been a fan of the Melt palettes. I love the stacks, love the formula. I think they do such a good job with that formula. But for whatever reason, it just does not translate into the palettes. But not, I mean, not only is the packaging beautiful, but the inside of this, I love. I love the pinks and then the cool tones. I really do. The color story of this got me and I said, I'm gonna try Melt. Again, give them another shot, and unfortunately, this is far worse than the other ones I've tried. Um, this is probably the worst one that I have tried. I do not feel that these are worth it at all. I feel like this shade right here and this shade right here, if you watch my tutorials, um, this blends out to almost look like this. I don't understand. It's like they have pigmentation whenever you first put them down and then they just blend out to almost nothingness. I don't find that the shimmers are that great. Uh, these two down here, this gray, I definitely have patchiness issues with. And then the black, when you first put it down, very opaque. And then again, I just, it turns more gray, which I already have the gray. And it's just, it's so lackluster. And these metallics too, I forgot to mention, they're very crumbly. You really can't even use these dry and have an impact on the eye. It's just, this is a total absolute miss for me. It's not a terrible palette. It's okay, but it's not worth the money. I, I just can't recommend this to anyone. And again, the packaging is stunning. I love this. It kind of reminds me of my uh, Starbucks cups that I've been collecting with the little studs on them but that's as far as my excitement for this palette goes. The next thing, I used my very last one of these last night. These are the Peace Out Dark Spots 12 Dissolving Micro Needling Dots with Niacinamide and Licorice Extracts. I love niacinamide. Niacinamide does such amazing things. It really does brighten your skin. It helps fade dark spots, all of that. And these are supposed to be like concentrated to one area. They feel really good to me. Um, I know I'm strange, but they have like these little tiny little prickly things on them. You put them on before you do all the rest of your skincare and it sticks down to a spot. You use it and then you wait a few days and use it again. And according to the box, it says that when used twice weekly, which I did for two consecutive weeks, you would notice a difference in the spot. Well, I've used this entire box on just one spot on my face. There is a dark spot right here that I am constantly covering or trying to hide with my Charlotte Tilbury corrector. And this did nothing, nothing at all. I mean, it didn't even touch it. It didn't fade it. It didn't do anything to it. So this was just a waste of money. I don't know if maybe that spot is just extra difficult but I've heard so many good things about this and it just did not, did not work for me. I wouldn't suggest it at all. Anywho, that is it for my favorites and fails. Let me know down below what you have been loving and not loving during the month of February and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.